It's a letter from Hogwarts. Dear Mr. Fry, we are pleased to inform you that you have been chosen to play Harry Potter on the PlayStation. Oh boy! One minute the game was there and then it was gone! It was like magic! Alright, so I'm actually pretty excited for this episode. Growing up, I had the Sorcerer's Stone game on the PC, and I think this one is pretty similar to that. Oh, we're going in the book! Going in the book! There was nothing about the starry sky that night to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening. As unsuspecting muggles slept, a huge motorbike with a giant astride it tumbled down from the darkness. The giant, named Hagrid, left a blanket-wrapped bundle on the doorstep of number four, Privet Drive. Nestled in the bundle was a baby. So did Hagrid do it all alone? No Dumbledore? No McGonagall? I don't think Hagrid's that reliable. For the next 11 years, Harry lived with his dreadful... Whoa, 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 no, no. The next 10 years, not 11. The game made a mistake. I pointed it out. Fish swim, birds fly, penguins don't. Until that fateful day, when he received the letter inviting him to a... I love that face so much! And we have arrived at Hogwarts! Ah, oh, there he is! The man, the myth, the legend, Albus Dumbledore. Well, is he gonna talk? No, Hogwarts is for Oh, there he goes. Secrets, Harry. He's old, don't judge him. Now, if you think Dumbledore looks bad in this game... You don't know what bad looks like. The characters in this game, I don't even know where to start. Their heads are all misshapen, their mouths barely move, and when they do move, they never match what they say. Some of them don't even open their mouths. They just move like they've got peanut butter in their gums. She's a real know-it-all, and a teacher's pet. No, I am not. Hmm, she had to stop and think about it for a while. But no, she's not. Oh dear, I hope nothing bad happens to me for saying that. Honey, I think something bad already did happen to you. And in the cutscenes, a lot of times, characters make all these, like, weird movements. If it's here, there may be Snape's after it. There are even rumors that you know who's- Oh, I'm sorry, Ron. Do you have a rock in your shoe? Only rock we should be thinking about right now is the Sorcerer's Stone, fool. The game is unusual in a lot of ways. It has a lot of platforming elements, but there's no jump button. To climb, you just keep walking up to something. And to jump from platform to platform, you have to keep running. And the camera in this game, to say the least, it is the work of dark magic. <gasps> Grindelwald! You go to each class to learn a spell that you can then use for the rest of the game. To learn it, you have to do this thing. Am I playing Harry Potter or Parappa the Rapper? To use the incendio spell, you have to do this weird button masher, and the hit detection is like uber delayed. And it sucks because Hagrid makes you go searching for ingredients, and you have to use this spell all the time. Harry, can you fetch me some fire seeds from a rare plant in the forest? I know that Hagrid is not very bright. But what made him think that Harry, who is brand new to the wizarding world, should go jumping around hot molten lava, entering gargoyle warthog territory, just to bring him some seeds from the Forbidden Forest? And you thought Snape was the asshole? Turns out the seeds we found were to help him hatch the dragon, which in the book and in the movie isn't until way later. You've done it, Harry. It's hatching. We'll get him out of the fire, you d motherfucker! Good God, he's burning! Listen to him, he's in pain! Do something! Up you come, me beauty. And you're just gonna reach in the fire and pick him up? Harry cannot be any stupider! There's always characters standing in your way, like Malfoy, of course. Oh dear, I think Potter is going to cry. There's this part where Malfoy challenges Harry to a duel, and he's not that hard. Crab, 
Take care of this upstart. <laughs> okay. Got all my anger out after seeing that thing. <laughs> and then there's Peeves, the poltergeist, who always pops out of nowhere, scaring the shit out of me. You know, this game is actually really scary. And I'm not just talking about the character's misshapen heads. You're constantly being stalked by Voldemort, and there's levels where you have to sneak past Filch in the dark, which would be scary enough in the light. Intruder. And then there's a level where Snape sends Harry through the creepy dungeon. Maybe Snape is the bigger so I'm in the dungeon. Where's this door lead? To the troll bedroom? What? There's a troll casually living in the school? With a bedroom? What the fuck? Troll in the dungeon! We know! We gave him a bedroom! I used to have a puff skein, but Fred and George used it for bludger practice. The game does a pretty bland job at following the source material. So much so that there's a part where you leave Hogwarts to go back to Diagon Alley. Now run along. Maybe I'll turn you into a turnip and then eat you for my tea. <laughs> okay, so far, that's the scariest thing I've seen in this game. Who eats turnips with tea? So this is where the game gets uh, notorious. You need to buy more ingredients to help the dragon. And for some reason, one of the ingredients is three peacock feathers. We go to Ollivander's, and we have to catch this peacock. And if you have to use your wand, keep it well away from my peacock. It's so fast! Like, I have to wait on top of him before I can pull out a feather. It, this is so stupid. You can find this invisibility cloak to sneak up on him. But don't I already have an invisibility cloak? You get it in the game! This is so messed up! You ever heard the phrase, tricky as pulling peacock feathers? This is where that phrase began. Ron and I will meet you on the third floor by the doorway that leads to Fluffy. We have to get the stone first. All right, now let's go after that stone. We put Fluffy to sleep, play chess, and finally catch up to Quirrell. Damn you, Potter. Ooh. When you're nine years old, the word damn, it's like the total MF. Like it's full frontal nudity. Boy, we had a lot to learn. So we get the stone from the mirror, but someone's standing in our way. Harry Potter, give me the stone. What is wrong with that guy's head? Well, isn't it obvious? The Dark Lord's attached to the back of it. But I mean, he looks like a souffle. So we've reached the final boss. Oh, and I'm dead. Or not. Looks like Harry's the boy who lived twice. So this boss battle, it's not painfully easy. But it's not exactly pulling peacock feathers. See, I told you that was a phrase. I'm serious, when it comes to challenge, this boss battle pales in comparison to that peacock. Just like the book and the movie, the game ends with Dumbledore being a total a to the Slytherin house. In recognition of Mr. Harry Potter's pure nerve and outstanding courage, I award Gryffindor 60 points. The additional points had won the house cup for Gryffindor. With no help from Ron, Hermione, or Neville, apparently. Neville, you truly are useless. Get him off that screen, I don't want to see him. But yeah, like I said, the game is bad at following the story. But is it a bad game? I mean, no. It's aged terribly, but I mean, the PS2 was already out, so they probably didn't want to put much work into it. Eventually, they did make a Sorcerer's Stone game for the next-gen consoles. Because they'll make anything. The game can be pretty frustrating, but it captures the franchise's magic in a not necessarily visual way, but in a unique way. Let's say that. As always, thank you for watching, and if I have any witches or wizards out there watching, I've got this new spell you might like. Subscribe because to Brucium! You can subscribe now!